this video, we will kind of summarizing what is economics and some very important uh, pair of the concept. So you have to know how what's the differences for those a uh, pair of the uh, pair of uh, concepts. So so what economics about? So economics about understand how economics function in the basic purpose of studying economics, and we want to learn how an economy is organized and how it behaves and how successfully achieve the basic objectives. So we are part of the economy, and it's very important for us to be able to judge if the economy is running well. How can we be a good judge? That is learning economics. And also, uh, what is the difference between ends and the means? And ends and the means. So economists don't formulate the economics objectives. So instead, they actually focus on the means available for achieving given goals. So usually, being an economist, we just try to understand how every participant that they interact with each other, and you know, what is their objectives, and how they are interact with each other. So our goal is try to help the decision maker to make a better decision to achieve their goals. So that's why the economists don't formulate an economics objectives. See, so they only focus on the means to achieving the goals for each individual participant. So now we will explain a pair of the concepts, and you might already hear them before. It's called a normative analysis and a positive analysis. So you may see this a pair of the concepts in your business class as well. So into this class, we try to distinguish them. So first of all, is the positive analysis. So positive analysis focuses on how things might be done without the subject the judgment of what is the best. So another way, for the people doing the positive analysis, they don't talk about if the uh, the researcher think is good or bad. They are basically just stating the facts, try to find the reason behind it. So for instance, some health economists study why the kids will get obesity. So looking for different factors such as eating too much sweet food and the portion offered by the restaurant is too big. So in that case, you can see the researcher doesn't try to critique on if the restaurant is doing the right thing or not. They are just trying to find the reason why the kids get the obesities. So that is considered as a positive analysis. And the second type of analysis is called a normative analysis. And usually uh, the policy decision maker try to do the normative analysis. Why? Because normative analysis incorporate the subjective judgments uh, what ought to be done. So such as uh, they saw the kids get fat because they relate to the portion of the restaurant uh, the plate is too big. So then they will think, okay, the decision by the restaurant is not ethical, it is wrong. So what they should be doing is that they should uh, declare, uh, should uh, uh, ex ex uh, exclude uh, the calorie of the food. That exactly what happened in the restaurant. If you go to the restaurant, you will be able to see the calorie for each dishes. So by doing that, the government try to avoid obesity. So obviously, they making the judgment about the restaurant's behavior, not mentioning the calorie of the food is not right. So that is called a normative analysis. So it's based on opinion and the judgments. So in the economic world, you will see many situations, sometimes people using the normative analysis and sometimes using positive analysis. And in some economic research paper, they may use both. First of all, they try to find out the reason, and then they try to find the solution, and because they think uh, the, uh, the fact that they will present, they think is, uh, is something people doing the wrong things. So they see the differences between positive and normative analysis. The next pair of the concept is macroeconomics and microeconomics. So what are the differences? Obviously, the spelling are different. So the first the five words are different. One is M-A-C-R-O, actually the first two words. One is M-A, another is M-I. So what's the differences? So for the macroeconomics, and it is a study of aggregate economic behavior of the economy as a whole. So which means instead of studying individual decisions, human beings, so they are studying a group. So who care? Government care and the big corporation care. So they care about aggregate economic behavior. So in terms of the micro MI, 
So that's a study of the individual behavior in the economy of the component of the largest economy, such as you try to understand why you buy the milk from the Wegmans instead of Walmart. So those questions are micro. If you are trying to understand why we have high low unemployment rate after the, the new president, so that would be considered as a macroeconomic question because you are discussing something related to a group of people instead of just individual, a small group of uh, human beings. And so another example, for example, in the macroeconomics, we might be concerned about how much money in total consumer will spend on goods and services. But in microeconomics, economists focus attention on how much consumers spend on specific goods. So although the study of the microeconomics and the macroeconomics operate at a different level of abstraction, so they are intricately related. Macro uh, is the word meaning aggregate. Outcomes depend on the micro behavior, and the micro individual behavior is affected by macro out outcomes. So to put it simple, so every our behavior, everybody, you, me, and your friend, everybody's behavior contribute to our macro outcomes. So the government policy affecting the macro, such as interest rate, such as um, uh, such as the exchange rate. They all will affect our daily decision making process. So that's why the macro also will outcome depends on the micro. Micro behavior is affected by macro. So that this is the second pair of the concept. And please pay attention. And the next pair is the question most of the time my student will ask me. So what do you think in the economic world? How the people deal with the theory and the reality? So the distinction between macroeconomics and microeconomics is one of the many simplification we make in studying economic behavior. So the economy is much too vast and complex to describe and explain in one course or one lifetime. We therefore focus on basic relationships so we don't try to complicate the situation. So if too complicated, to get the answer. To complicated to hard to get the answer. So we isolate a basic principle of the economic behavior and then use those principles to predict the economic events and develop economic policies. So generally speaking, we are trying to focus on the average level instead of each individual. So we try to simplify the case. The reason we simplify the, our analysis is try to focus on the most important issue we try to resolve. So we formulate theories or models of economic behavior and then use those theories to evaluate and design economic policies. And in this theory, we typically ignore the possibility that many things can change at one time. So what do we define it? So that is called catalyst perverse. I believe that's a Greek letter, Greek language, a Latin word. So that means the assumption of the nothing else changing so although the assumption of the catalyst perverse makes easier to formulate economic theory and policy, it also increases the risk of the error. If other things do change in a significant way, our prediction and policies may fail. So the uh, imperfect knowledge, it may be impossible to understand and explain how the economy works without getting tangled up in the subjective value judgments. So it is not clear where the truth lies. For more than 200 years, economists have argued about what makes the economy tick. However, we can acquire understanding of the basic economic principles. So in other words, when you're learning economic classes, don't feel it's not realistic. So we are trying to learn in the average performance and use it to do the prediction. So the reason we do that is because it's better know something than know nothing. And so when we are trying to solve so making decisions or facing such an uncertain world, it will be nice if we will be able to understand on average level how people will behave, how people will react, and then correspondingly do uh, the making decision. So obviously, as the development of economic theory, so currently we do have many branches of economic theories. So one of the branches actually is specifically dealing with the uh, uh, the uh, the volatilities, which means when the individual perform different from the average, 
and how can we capture those people's uh, how they make decisions so uh, that's the end of this video and also the end of this chapter so in next chapter we will look at uh, how our US economy look like and we will talk about more numbers and help you better understand what, how, and for whom, and how the U.S. answer those three questions.